In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple animation using SOLIDWORKS Composer views and dragging them into the animation timeline. Uh, this is a pre-made version of the animation we're going to walk through. So you can see that we are disassembling components to replace a battery, reassembling those components, then we turn to the side and watch these components explode. All right, let's take the file from scratch and see if we can make the same sort of animation. So we want to start thinking of our views as intermediate steps in the animation. So uh, first thing I need to do is create our start position by creating a new view, uh, just with the, the model sitting in the, you know, kind of an ISO position in the middle of the screen. We'll call this our start position. Then we want to show the battery components being removed. So I'm going to zoom into uh, a kind of close up view of that area and take a uh, capture that view. We'll go ahead and call this one battery detail. Right, now for the next view, we're going to start removing components uh, one or two at a time. So first I will control select those two screws there, come over to my transform and do a simple translate and move the screws out of the way. And then I'll capture a view. Now I could rename this screw removal or whatever, um, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave the view names as they are. All right, so I have captured that first step. Then I'm going to remove this plate and capture another view. I'll take this last component and capture another view. So you can see that the thumbnails of each of these are showing uh, those intermediate steps. So now that I've moved all of those components out of the way, I want to hide them. So I'll go ahead and make a duplicate view. Um, and from here, I can just use Control Select to grab all four of these. And I can hide them using the H key or by dragging this opacity scale down manually. Either way, once the components are hidden, I do want to go ahead and update this view. And you can see that the thumbnail uh, reflects that those components are not visible in this particular view. All right, we'll go ahead and move the battery out of the way for view number seven. So I'll go ahead and capture that. And then similarly, I will hide the battery for view number eight. Now, to show the reassembly of those components, I don't need to recreate those views because what I can do in the animation is I can essentially just play them in reverse. So if you look at these views backwards, you can see the battery goes into the opening and then the components reassemble. Okay. So I'll go back to the battery detail view. And you can see that that brings all of the components back to showing and they are in their original position. So from battery detail, I'm going to zoom out uh, and take a new kind of intermediate step before the last frame of our animation. So I'll capture this here. So we can see this is my view number nine. Um, and then the last frame of our animation is going to be the explode view of these uh, components of the plunger subassembly in the back. So I'll use a box select to grab those components and then I will move them away from the rest of the assembly. Then I'll also use the linear explode to kind of evenly space them out. Right. And then just kind of adjusting my viewport here. And then I will go ahead and capture this into a new view. So view number 10 shows that explosion. All right, we've got all 10 views we need for this animation. Now let's get started uh, with actually bringing them to life in the animation timeline. So I just need to click down here to activate the timeline. And from here on out, it's really just a simple drag and drop to bring the views into the animation uh, kind of frames. So I'll take my start position and drag this view onto the zero second timestamp. Right. Then I have to decide how long I want between views. So to pan over to the battery detail view, I'll have that take about two seconds. So from zero to two seconds, it is getting to this view. All right, 
Now the next couple of steps where the screws are removed, the plate is removed, and the seal is removed, I want each of those to take one second in between. So I'll go ahead and drop this one onto the three second mark, onto the four second mark, and the five second mark. All right, just kind of still going, six second mark to uh, hide the components, seven second mark to remove the battery, and then eight second mark to show the battery uh, disappearing. Now, like I said, I can reuse those same views going in reverse to show the reassembly. However, I may want to save a little bit of time instead of dragging and dropping them in reverse order. I can do something pretty handy in this animation timeline, which is create a copy of the views from seconds two through seven, and then I can reverse their order. So I'll draw a box around those keyframes and hold control on my keyboard and drag and drop this out to the side. Now I'll put this onto roughly the nine second mark. From here, while they still have that blue box around them, I can right click and invert the time selection. So now the selected views are just happening in the reverse order from how they are happening from seconds two to seven. Now they're happening in reverse from nine to 14. While that blue box is still around them, I can still kind of drag them a little bit closer to the nine second mark. And that looks pretty good. Let's take a preview of what our animation looks like so far. So we can see that the views are capturing the information of where the, where the components are positioned in space, as well as if they are set to hide or show. And we see the opacity fading in and out between those frames. Now for the last two frames of the animation, um, maybe I want these to take a little bit longer. So for view number nine, I will drag that out to the 17 second mark. I can always uh, use the scroll on my middle mouse wheel to uh, see more of my timeline. Uh, then I can take my view number 10 and drop it onto the 20 second mark. So let's take a look at the finished product. I hope you found this video helpful for getting started with uh, animations inside of SolidWorks Composer. One great thing about using this method when getting started is that you can also reuse these views for additional export methods. So you can export any of these views to a high resolution image or to a technical illustration to create an interactive parts list or use them within um, an interactive file in the SOLIDWORKS Composer player.